Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today we are looking at the Mythic Legions Tharnog. I'm going to take a look at the packaging. So this is uh, a really big package. Uh, I believe this is the Ogre Scale pa size packaging for Tharnog, who is, of course, a Brute Scale figure. Now, this is my first Brute Scale figure. I have the Centaur, uh, which is a Brute Scale torso on top of a horse. But this is the first full brute scale figure that I will have in my collection. I passed on the gin in this wave. I I don't know if at Legion's Con I may consider that reconsider that choice uh, because this guy looks great and and I'm excited to get him out of the box and sort of compare him to a 1.0 figure, compare him um, you know to some other scales. But uh, really nice big open window box there. So you can see Tharnog. You can see those antlers that are in there. Um, you know, the, the detail on this figure is phenomenal. Uh, and he is clearly bigger than a standard figure. Uh, at least a 1.0 figure. Uh, on the side, you know, we get the beautiful Nate Barch art. And then we get a bio, which I'm not going to read for the sake of time. On the back, we get a, a beautiful, and again, more great art uh, from Nate. Arakagor, Azahazar, and the Jinn uh, Kalazir, I believe. As I said, I passed on the Jinn because I didn't really need a Jinn, but I kind of feel like I want that brute scale body and some of those accessories, but I don't know uh who knows you know i i may be i may be unboxing and reviewing the gin sometime soon but uh you know some some lore on the back uh some some lore of mythic legions and mythos there convocation of basilia sigil on the side there you go nothing crazy about the box nothing crazy about the packaging mythic legions is very much about the figure so let's get this guy out of the box all right, so here is Tharnog out of the box. Now, I did take the pauldrons off. The pauldrons come on the figure in the package, but I took them off just to get a really sort of good look at a brute scale body um, because this is new to me. This is different. Uh, this scale, you know, I don't have in my collection yet. So I was very, very curious, you know, what was going on with the body uh, size wise and, and so on and so forth. But I will say that these pauldrons are absolutely massive. So for reference, this is a pretty standard 1.0 pauldron uh, for a 1.0 kind of standard size body. Uh, <laughs> this is the pauldron for Tharnog. It's huge. It's thick. Like this is sort of one layer of plastic. You can sort of see there. This thing is like thick. It is layers sort of put together and then glued. Uh, there is a lot of substance here. There is a lot of material here. There is a lot of detail, sculpt work, paint, uh, on and on and on. You know, it it's all here and it's fantastic. There's, also, there's a port here as well uh, to plug something in. More on that later. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they plug in. Uh, I believe the same as a standard 1.0. I could be wrong, you know. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments if you know the answer to that. It looks like the peg might be a little bit bigger, uh, but it's pretty darn close as far as I can tell. Uh, so I took those pauldrons off. They're huge. Uh, but so is he. The, uh, the, the, the brute scale figure is just that. I mean, he is brutish and large and from the hands to the feet to the legs to just the overall scale of the thing. You know, brute by name, brute by nature. This thing is big and chunky and a lot of fun. Just for reference, uh, that is a 1.0 sort of standard orc. Uh, and then a, a goblin, you know, to get all your, your green fellas in there. Uh, the brute scale figure is clearly taller. I mean, it's about an inch taller than a 1.0 orc. Uh, so, pretty fun. Uh, I always love, you know, getting new scales, new sizes of figures. I love the potential for, you know, getting more orcs in, uh, in this scale. 
for me, orcs, you know, I think of orcs as being a little bit bigger than, than humans, so getting the 1.0 orc is great, uh, but the brute scale orc to me is a little bit more exciting, so I'm hoping that we will get more brute scale orcs in the future. Uh, but for now, you know, we have one. The fact that he's technically, you know, like a, a good guy, uh, he's in the convocation of Basilia, so he's, he's sort of, you know, he's a magic user on the side of good. Um, you know, it's cool, but I, I want more, I want more big, menacing, mean orcs too. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I do like this. I do like sort of turning the convention of an orc as a bad guy a little bit on its head, especially when it's, a, you know, a new scale of figure. Uh, articulation wise, you know, we're, we're looking at pretty standard Mythic Legion's articulation. So single jointed elbow, single jointed knee, you know, rotation and uh, a, a pivot at the wrist, uh, you know, ball joint and ankle rocker, uh, you know, all the standard stuff. And, uh, you know, before you say like, oh, Mythic Legions doesn't pose very well, they pose just fine. I, you know, this guy's not posed, but they do fantastic. They're so much better than the action figures that I had as a kid. So I'm not complaining about uh, Mythic Legions articulation. It is basic. Uh, compared to some, you know, really modern articulation schemes. But the sculpt is fantastic. You cannot deny that the sculpt and that the paintwork and that the detail on this guy are really second to none. So, you know, yeah, you know, make sure you're comparing apples to apples, which is pretty hard with Mythic Legions because there's not a lot of lines that are doing what they are doing. Um, this guy is beautiful. Uh, the, the paint, as I said, is phenomenal. The wash, you know, you, you, you don't just get a green figure. The thing's painted head to toe, and it's got sort of a wash, so you'd see all the, the detail and all the sculpt. Uh, very, very well executed. There's, I, you know, I was sort of trying to nitpick, trying to find something with the paint that I could complain about. Uh, it's just not there. Uh, the, the wraps on his uh, shins, the wraps on his wrists, are just that the wraps um or sorry the on the shin like this one will move so you can get a bare arm or a bare leg underneath there the wrap on the wrist is sculpted on so you do get rotation there um but it is uh it is it is part of the the sculpt whereas that one will uh, will move around and actually come off the leg if you wanted it to yeah overall just a absolutely beautiful figure uh, my only complaint is that he's got and, and I, you're not ever going to notice this because once I get the pauldrons, I, you'll, you'll see what I mean once I sort of get everything on here. But once this guy's all loaded up, you're never going to worry about this. But he does have a a little bit of a bucky cap thing going on. And if you know what I'm talking about, if you know, you know, uh, there's a weird sort of gap here. Even when I put the, the beard down, you know, you get that Rob Liefeld chest thing going on, um, uh, which is... You know, it really doesn't take away from this figure because the figure is so good and you're never going to look at it from this angle, I don't think. Um, you know, feel free to disagree. But uh, yeah, I think once this guy gets the pauldrons back on and he gets some of the other accessories on, uh, that is going to be such an insignificant thing that it won't matter. Um, you know, I keep mentioning the accessories. I keep mentioning all the things that are going to get loaded onto this guy. So let's take a look at his accessories. All right, so I mentioned the pauldrons already. I said that they have a port in them. More on that later. Well, it's later. Uh, we get these big old antlers. They look like moose antlers. They are not quite the same as the antlers that we got with uh, Alder the moose. Alder the moose. You know, pronounce it how you like. Uh, if you have two, you can pronounce it two different ways if you want. Uh, but yeah, they, these antlers are are great, sculpted really nicely, beautiful paint apps. Again, you know, there, there's sort of some cream color and some beige and, you know, the, the wash on these uh, and the paint apps make you sort of see all the little scuffs, all the little marks, everything that's on there. Uh, absolutely fantastic, wonderful uh, detail on those. We get another fur piece. This is going to sort of wrap around the front of Tharnog. 
Uh, as I said, you know, I had a nitpick about the, the, the sort of disconnect between sort of the beard and the torso. That, I think, is pretty much going to make up the difference and uh, sort of fill the gap, so to speak. We get an alternate set of hands, so you get just standard C-grip hands on the figure out of the box, but we get these open hands as well. Now, I did mention that he is a magic user from the Convocation of Basilia, so having these expressive hands, for me, is, uh, is, is almost a must. Uh, you know, he's not going to be wielding a sword. He's not going to have a big old axe, at least for now. Uh, so so having those hands is, is definitely something uh, that I appreciate. Just like the other figures in this wave, uh, you know, most of the magic users, I believe all of the magic users, have an alternate head, sort of a magic user head. Uh, and Tharnog is no different. He gets uh, that, that paint app. Uh, similar to, you know, Samir and, and Zende, um, which uh, I, I like, I appreciate. For me, on the shelf, you know, this version is, is the one that I'm going to go with. But I definitely really dig this head. And, you know, hopefully I have a use for it. You know, if I get a second Tharnog or something like that. Um, I'm more hoping that I get a second Brute Scale Orc. Uh, and, and then I won't necessarily have a use for this head, but, uh, you know, we'll see. He comes with, a, a, what can I say about this staff? This thing is really, really tall. Like it won't even fit in shot, you know, st standing up, but it's beautiful. Uh, the skull of something, I don't even know what it is. Uh, the skull of, is sort of a, a maybe a, a goblin or something. It's quite small. You know, it's not to scale with any head in Mythic Legions. It's considerably smaller. But that's okay. I mean, the uh, the effect is there. You know, you, you sort of get the idea of, of what's going on there. Uh, this, this sort of windy stick, you know, it makes it seem like this whole... The whole staff is sort of one branch that sort of leads up to the end there. He is, of course, an orc shaman. Um, and uh, so it's, this is, you know, it's on brand for him uh, to have a staff like this. Uh, I, I really, really dig this. This makes me think of uh, some of the stuff that we're getting in the Necronomans wave. Uh, so, you know, I may revisit this uh sometime in the future but uh for now let me just say that that thing is absolutely beautiful but the accessory that i enjoy the most or sort of appreciate the most maybe is uh is is well i don't even know i don't i was going to describe it before i sort of showed it but i think showing it is really just the only way to do it justice so we get an alternate hand that has this beautifully sculpted kind of magic piece and then a a sphere on top of that and and what we've what we've essentially got is is a, is a is a hand and then a purple translucent piece and then a blue translucent piece and it is uh, beautiful it is uh, really really cool for the magic users i think the amount of stuff that the four horsemen packed in here as far as, you know, new parts, new pieces to really, uh, you know, to really let you pose the figures and, and sort of display the figures, you know, using magic is, uh, is amazing. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. And this piece, um, is, is great. I, I had totally forgot that this piece was in there. Like I knew that it was there. I pre-ordered the figure and, uh, and, and was fully aware, uh, that I was getting this. But as I said, the, the, the time between, you know, the pre-order and the delivery and me opening this, I completely forgot. Um, and this, this just looks beautiful. I mean, I'm a sucker for translucent stuff, but when, when you're talking about magic users, the magic effects, really really do a lot for me they really work uh this appears to be the same hand that we get um as, as an alternate hand which uh you know is even cooler to me because 
you know, you can sort of pose the hand like this and then, you know, if you're doing stop motion, if you're doing, uh, you know, uh, some sort of thing where, it, you know, from frame to frame, you know, there's a difference, uh, you get the magic effect there. So, I don't know, just really, really cool. I'm really digging it. I'm really digging this figure as well. I am going to get this guy, you know, geared up and and magicked up and posed up and give my final thoughts. All right, so here is Thornog, and he is glorious. I mean, the details, the accessories, the layers, you know, the sculpt with the fur and the magic and the staff and the antlers... He is, he verges, dare I say, on overwhelming, uh, but in, in a good way, in, in sort of a, a, a very, very good way. Uh, you know, as I said, the, the, the nitpick that I had about the neck totally goes away once you get them all geared up. This magic effect accessory, beautiful the staff as expected is uh is is sort of otherworldly and and perfect um you know i would say altogether just an absolutely stunning figure uh and a really really great example of what mythic legions and what the four horsemen are doing right now uh in terms of what they're capable of and sort of where they're going with this stuff all the new parts the new scales uh you know on and on and on i i could i could sort of praise them all day um but what i will say is if you don't have a tharnog you need one this is a fantastic figure uh i got mine from ecollectibles.ca so if you are in canada they should be your go-to for mythic legions and just about every other toy line um but uh yeah reach out to mike and uh, and grab one of these tharnogs right away because this is definitely one that i would recommend if you are a mythic legions fan i would definitely recommend this if you are a you know i think this sort of fits into the to the uh the uh, warcraft you know if you're doing any fantasy you know sword and sorcery type stuff this guy is definitely one that you want uh so go out and grab yourself one today if you enjoyed this video please hit the thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe and if you don't want to miss future videos, hit the bell icon to get notifications. Till next time, bye-bye!